The image of the jester, or fool, wearing a three-toed cap and performing for their king or queen is one of the most familiar icons of the Middle Ages. A jester? A jester? But who were the jesters, and what role did they play, and what were their lives actually like? The truth is that while jesters were important to medieval entertainment, their lives were far from just being fun and games. Today, we're going to take a look at what life was really like as a medieval jester. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what overlooked historical figures you would like to hear about. All right, let's see a tight five from these funny men. How would you do the queen? Well, from behind her, Grace. <laughs> Contrary to what we often see in movies and cartoons, a king's fool wasn't just some clownish oaf who got kicked around by the rest of the court. On the contrary, jestering was usually considered a respected profession, and jesters themselves were typically well-educated and highly intelligent. Also, that classic motley jester costume? Professional jesters didn't wear those. On most days, a jester wore the same kind of clothes any nobleman would wear to the king's court. So if professional jesters didn't wear the famous jester costume, who did? The answer is amateur fools. What's black and white, black and white, black and white, and black and white? A nun falling down the stairs. These trying too hard to get the laugh amateurs would nearly always sport the classic getup, which consisted of a hood with multiple ears and a multicolored tunic. Various parts of the outfit, including the shoes, would usually have bells tied to them. Oh yeah, bells. Bells are funny. Since they didn't belong to any particular royal court, an amateur fool would travel around performing at fairs, in festivals, and on holidays. If none of those things were going on, you would likely find them performing for tips in the street. In modern times, we have the unequivocal right to make fun of our leaders, and rightfully so. But in medieval times, making fun of the king or queen was likely to get you executed. What you just did is punishable by death. Unless, of course, you were the court jester. Yep. This medieval double standard noted that the jester was the only person legally allowed to mock the king. Think of it as something akin to an official royal roast. Sir Geoffrey Ross, if you will. Many rulers even took great delight in being mocked by their jesters. Best of all, the jester's power to satirize didn't end with the king. A fool was typically given the power to openly mock any noble, whether the shortcomings he derided were real or made up. That, my friends, is called work in the room. No one likes to deliver bad news. Bad news, milady. Rum is dead. Especially to a monarch who has the power to execute you. Nevertheless, someone had to give a spoonful of sugar to make the medicine go down. Jesters were there in order to keep the ruler appraised of things that weren't going too well. Yes, it was the fool's duty to deliver bad news. And as if that's not enough, they had to deliver it in a lighthearted manner. Delivering crucial information without provoking the ire of the master was a tricky business, and skilled fools were typically able to turn bad news into an amusing joke. Your fiancé was only a third-rate sailor, but a first-rate second course. <laughs> Just don't open with the bad news. Jesters were well-respected and important to their masters, but they were also entertainers. Like today, being an entertainer is hard enough, and for jesters, it could often be downright dangerous. They didn't have stuntmen. This was a one-man show. One aspect of jestering that could be highly dangerous was juggling. Juggling was a popular entertainment, but juggling with safe items like fruit got old fast, literally and figuratively. Audiences expected thrills and excitement, and so many jesters upped their game by juggling dangerous items like axes, daggers, and swords. Anything sharp was bound to be a hit, and the more dangerous the act was, the more audiences would applaud. Interestingly, juggling sharp objects wasn't just good for entertainment. It was also one of the means jesters would use on the battlefield to taunt enemies. I mean, what better way to show someone you're not worried about the threat they pose than to juggle axes while they look on? Sure, sure, it's not for every audience. As skilled entertainers, court jesters were expected to be multi-talented. In medieval times, that meant being able to make music by farting. Yeah! Not exactly A material, but it was commonly sought talent, and being able to do it could pay off in big ways. For example, one jester famous for this ability was the 12th century English jester, Roland Lefarter. 
also known as Roland the Farter. People, we only wish we could make this up. Every year, Roland would perform on Christmas Day. Yes, Christmas Day, as if it couldn't get any weirder. And end his show with one jump, one whistle, and one fart. Serving under King Henry II, Roland's act was so beloved he was awarded a manor in Suffolk and 30 acres. Yep, that's gold material right there. Throwing a lavish party every single day might sound like fun, but most rulers didn't do it. This meant that jesters were really only performing occasionally, which raises the question of what did they do the rest of the time? The most famous jesters were able to relax, rehearse new material while looking at the mirror, but most typical jesters had other duties around the household to attend to when they weren't performing. Examples of such alternate duties included things like keeping the hounds and traveling to the market to buy livestock to feed the royal family and the rest of the household. Even back then, the hustle was real. The First Amendment guarantees all Americans freedom of speech. But in the Middle Ages, there was no such freedom, unless you were a court jester. Ordinary people could get themselves in big trouble by speaking wrongly of a king, lord, or nobleman. But jesters were not only allowed to make such criticisms, they were expected to. Because they had no real fear of reprisal, jesters were able to speak their mind and offer advice when others may have feared to give it. This meant the jester was often one of the only people a ruler could go to for an honest assessment of their actions and decisions. He's not welcome. A jester was a trusted professional who served numerous roles, and both kings and queens alike have been known to develop close friendships with their personal court jesters. This meant that a jester often held a significant political position within their kingdom and would often even accompany their masters to war, kind of like a medieval Bob Hope. There is a well-known story about Jenny von Stockach, the court jester for the Duke of Austria. Jenny was present when the Duke assembled his war council to plan an attack on Switzerland. It is alleged that Jenny warned the Duke and his advisors, You fools, you're all debating how to get into the country, but none of you have thought how you're going to get out again. The Duke ignored the warning and suffered massive losses on the battlefield. In this case, it would have been wise to listen to the fool. The fool had many duties, even on the battlefield, and one was to entertain. On the night before a battle, the jester would tell jokes, sing songs, recite stories, juggle, and dance. Like USO shows, the purpose was to take the soldiers' minds off the battle, letting them relax a little bit. The jester's other duty was to roast the enemy. Yes, telling jokes at the expense of those who would dare oppose the regent in battle was actually part of the jester's set when the kingdom was at war work the crowd of troops up a bit, which would hopefully raise their morale and spirits. A jester would often let such insults fly while riding in front of the troops, in order to be sure the enemy could hear. This taunting wasn't just for fun, though. It actually served a strategic purpose. The idea was for the jester to provoke those enemies who had explosive tempers into breaking ranks and charging prematurely. Entertaining the troops and slinging one-liners at the enemy was only a part of the jester's job on the battlefield. They also served as messengers to the opposing army. If the king or queen needed to send demands to the enemy, the jester was the only person trusted enough to do it right. Some of these demands might include the conditions for the release of hostages or the terms of surrender. And if you're thinking that strolling into enemy territory and firing off demands sounds dangerous, you're right. Jesters were known to be important and were supposed to never be harmed but it didn't always go that way. Angry enemies would often kill the messenger when they didn't like the message. Captured fools might be beheaded. Just clean up my neck a little, leave the top full. Or launched back to their own lines by way of catapult, a jester flying through the air, marking a point in history where the original, hey, doesn't flying suck, joke started. So you're probably wondering, where could a king go to find a man who could give military advice as well as he could juggle knives? The truth is, jesters didn't come from any single place. They came from a range of backgrounds, from university dropouts to excommunicated monks. Oh yeah, those monk jokes, really good stuff. Although more educated candidates like monks were generally preferred, some rulers actually promoted from within. They selected their fools from existing serf servants, who themselves could be both intelligent and witty. Professional fools might have been well-respected professionals with keen intellects and great political power, but not all jesters were so fortunate. 
Sadly, some fools were people with physical deformities or mental illnesses that were detrimental to finding other employment. Known as innocent fools, such jesters would often be kept by wealthy and noble families in a degrading manner, similar to how one might keep a pet. They would work for no pay and be provided only with food, clothes, and a place to sleep on the floor. Like any other well-respected professional, medieval court jesters were typically paid very well for their services. Many became quite wealthy and might even enjoy a permanent place of residence in their master's castle. In other instances, some jesters were given large tracts of land with extravagant homes. However, that was just the successful ones. At the other end of the spectrum were the less fortunate jesters who had to travel from place to place. They often had no permanent home and lived in poverty. So what's your best joke? Can you make the king laugh? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.